Okay, sorry, it's getting a little bit of the uh, PowerPoint going. Um, welcome to this week. We're talking about gender and understanding the differences between gender and sex. And a lot of cases by now, you've probably experienced a lot of terminology about this, even in high school, or if this is um, something that you know you pay attention to. Um, gender issues are, are prevalent and something we talk about a lot in society, but I hope to talk about it more and um, the videos this week are really important to watch, especially um, just look at the, the ways in which uh, we market gendering. Um, I think that is really interesting how we still have a huge market marketing segment of men's and women's things that are often the same exact product and yet they have different prices. So we'll talk a little bit about that later. Starting with this quote today, uh, excuse the evening uh, sounds of trains going by and everything else, but um, I uh, like this quote from Audre Lorde because uh, it recognizes that women do not share the same exact experience everywhere. We are put together as a group just like men do not share the same exact experience everywhere. Um, so already we have different stories that are going to be um, highlighted based on other types of variables that are in people's lives. So she says this to kind of give that distinction. She's a black feminist. I am a black feminist. I mean, I recognize that my power as well as my primary oppressions come as a result of my blackness as well as my womanness. And therefore my struggles of, on both of these font, fronts are inseparable. And this reminds me of W.B. Du Bois when he was talking about double consciousness and when we were talking about him as a theorist. Um, to know that this uh, added sense of her blackness is something that she has to struggle with and then also the feminine um, different types of oppressions that come with that as well. Um, and so I think that's important for us to recognize what are the different characteristics that go into um, being female and also the things that we do based on all the different other variables that come to play. So gender inequality, as we've been talking about inequality and stratification, both on the global scale and our local scale, is the same type of thing that we look for when we're studying um, to see that there is inequality between men and women in terms of wealth, income, and status. There is no place in the world right now where women in on, for example, GDP or national income or anything like that are making more than men as a whole. It's a social fact. Um, this is something Durkheim would very clearly and any of our functionalists would say, you go, you do the math. Um, right now, women are not valued for their labor, even if they have the same uh, level qualifications. Women are not seen equally across the board when we're talking about governments and representation. Women are also uh, a lot of times not able to um, even voice their opinion in several parts of the world. Um, so inequality is something that is, is very high up on the um, concern for the world as we continue to think about how the social changes need to come about. Now, how we do that gets looked at very differently. There are different types of feminism. There are different types of theory that get at how that happens. And so um, it's not all the same uh, predictions as to how we, we get at that inequality. But especially when we look at wealth, income, and status, this, this is the truth and the reality. So the important question to ask about gender when we're looking at any situation, if you think about your own, uh, at, own area or field you're going into, are there more men in the field? Are there more women in the field? Um, what are some of the things that are being done? Are, are the pays um, different? Um, do you notice that? Can you look that up? And um, I think these are important for us to know. Uh, because when people look up average income, that's average between men and women. That skews things. So I often tell people, if, if you're a male, go and see what men make. And if you're a female, go see what females make because that's the reality, whatever you're looking at, um, as to what you'll probably see. Hopefully, you'll be in an industry or a place that will treat that on an equal scale, but that's not always the case. So you have to ask these questions. Do women and men have equal access to valued social resources when you're looking at things? Are people being paid the same? Are they being uh, valued the same? And do they have a voice? Do women and men have similar life options? Meaning, for example, uh, can those exact same roles be something that women and men can both occupy? Um, is it something that these jobs are available to women or are they available to men? Sometimes when we're talking about gendering, we often focus on 
the inequality between men and women, but we also really need to recognize that we sometimes gender roles in men, for example, in nursing, often have had to really fight for a role in that space um, because of what's attached to that as far as it being a feminine uh, occupation, at least has been thought of that in the past. So do they have similar life options and are women and men's roles valued similar, similarly? So that's part of, of that whole idea. So then how do we learn what it means to be male and female, feminine, masculine? This is all about our socialization. There's biology and socialization. We use our biology to often think of terms of how we're supposed to be socialized, but a lot of times this is uh, expectations. And so we need to know the difference between expectations of our gender and our actual biological um, makeup. And one thing about biology, if any of you are biologists, there's also a lot of times you know, for example, there are places in the world where high levels of intersex, uh, people born with both genitalia um, are present. Um, that's not something we talk about in society. And then we get to talking about sex and sexual orientation. That's more about our attractions. And then we talk about our gendering. That's how we present ourselves. Um, I've often heard it this way, you know, sex is who you're attracted to and sex, sexual orientation is who you're attracted to. And the idea of gendering is um, how and who you are that you present yourself as and, and what gender. Um, and so we have to know the difference in our terminology. Sex is the biological and anatomical dif differences distinguishing females and males. We know that's been a big discussion of debate this last week um, as we hear about you know, uh, distinctions being clarified by sex uh, for transgender, not being something is an acceptable term. Um, and I think that's gonna be challenged quite a bit uh, as people in the sociological fields, um, even in you know our medical fields and all of these have, have made space for it. Even Facebook has made face, uh, space for that. So um, d those differences need to be known. Sex is biological anatomical difference. Um, and I had a sister actually that was born genetically, um, not male or female. Um, she she presented as female her body parts presented as female but she was missing a chromosome and actually she had an extra one and um so what what's her category based on sex you know and we don't know 100 percent. she was born in 1955 there there were a lot of times that mom and dad were like we just went to the doctor and, and dealt with it. And a lot of times people would put her into down syndrome, but she wasn't. Um, there were a lot, a lot of other things going on in her, her body makeup. So I bring that up as a, you know, somebody that knows somebody and you may know somebody that has had some chromosomal differences. So if we're just talking biologically this way, um, there still has to be space for all the different just things biology do does what however you land on these subjects gender then is that social expectation about behavior and we see this change and has been changing in regard to what's appropriate for each sex gender refers not to physical attributes although we can present ourselves in physical ways you know um, I see a lot of people that are very fluid on campus um, they may present themselves masculine um, one day and feminine the other and you know, the biological sex uh, may be apparent based on, you know, um, the way in which their name comes across, but the names are sometimes changed. There's dead names that sometimes come across uh, if a person has changed their gender and presents differently. And of course, we see the differences as people um, go through the different uh, types of exploration or come to terms with who they think they are inside. I want you to watch that video on all the different types of gender um, descriptions and sexual orientation. It is really an excellent video. It's very short. And I'm going to ask you to, uh, in your post this week, you know, did you hear any new terms? Um, we've been talking about this in some of my other classes, and there's 55 terms now that we can uh, name. Um, and, and that's something that is going to continue to change, especially when we come to thinking about gender, sexual orientation, and presentation. Physical attributes then are used to sometimes show our masculinity and femininity, or there are sometimes people uh, are presenting asexual. And so that's something to consider. Let's go back to 
how we present ourselves in the typical masculine feminine ways. Um, first of all, I, 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 if you can get up, um, take, listen to my voice for a little bit and stand up on your tippy toes. And what I want you to do, I don't care if you're male or female, is while I'm talking about um, this for a little bit, walk around on your tippy toes um, as high as you can and then try to dance if you can um, on your tippy toes, you know, just go around and um, see if that feels natural. I mean, is that something that when you're born biologically as a female, that automatically you're gonna expect that somewhere in there in your lifetime, keep walking, I know it's, it hurts, but stay up on your tippy toes. And even if you're not doing this, um, I think it's important for you to do this. Um, have you been born to walk on three inch heels? Um, and we have to pause this for just a second because I gotta get my battery powder. Be right back. 